Hello, welcome to The Wandering Drew. I am Drew. On today's episode, I'd like to discuss sleeping bags and their ratings. Like you, most of the time I've gone to purchase a sleeping bag, the first thing I notice is the name and title of the product. The number that's used in the product line, I use as a guide on what temperature that bag will keep me warm to. Well, as we're gonna see, that's not always useful. Stay tuned to learn a little bit more about sleeping bags and their published ratings and what you need to know to make an educated decision and not be disappointed with your purchase. Welcome back and thank you for joining me. On today's episode, I'm gonna discuss sleeping bags and their ratings. Most major manufacturers will have their bags tested using one of two standards. There's the ISO standard or International Standards Organization, which came about in 2017, which is now currently used to test sleeping bags. There's an older standard from 2005 which is called the EN, or European norm. And both these standards are very similar and can be used to compare one to another without any conversion or uh, worry about how they're not accurate. The testing process is pretty straightforward. And to surmise it, what happens is a dummy, a test dummy is placed inside the sleeping bag that they're testing with patches on it to measure temperature. They then dress the dummy in a base layer of clothing the sleeping bag is placed on a sleeping pad and is put into a test cell. And then the sleeping bag with the test dummy in it is run through a series of standardized tests to get the ratings at which they feel a camper or a hiker that is using that sleeping bag or product will be comfortable at. So while there is a standardized testing, the problem is the testing is not standard enough. And what I mean by that is there are several variables in the testing process. For instance, even from cell to cell within a, an old lab, the type of sleeping bag that is used is not standardized. So it may vary from one test to another or even from lab to another. It may also vary in what the base layer that that hiker is, that test dummy is put into. So we don't know if those things are all being standard or not. They may very well be. I'm just not aware of that. And most of the discussions I've seen, they don't determine or discuss what that is. So maybe someone out there has a little bit more knowledge and can uh, correct me or send me some information on that or post that as a comment. But generally, these are variables. Now, are those gonna really throw off the test that much? Probably not a lot, but enough that it might make a difference. So just realize that these are guidelines and that you, as the consumer and the person that's gonna be using these sleeping bags, need to be a little bit more educated in what we're doing and what we're purchasing and why we're purchasing it. What are we gonna use it for? What type of environment is it gonna be used for? And what do I realistically expect out of this product? Additionally, you're gonna see, you need to know your body a little bit as well. So now that we know the type of testing that's gonna be done, let's go into the ratings that they result in and the temperature ratings that are published as specifications for sleeping bags and what they mean because we're gonna be using these numbers as a guideline to make a purchase, or what type of conditions we should use this bag in. Also, realize that some bags do not have a published rating, and there's a reason for this. It's not that those companies are not major manufacturers or don't wanna pay for the testing, it's that that product line is probably not meant to be used in cold weather, and therefore they don't view it, and it's not required, because you're not gonna put yourself in danger by using it. So a bag like this, which is a very thin bag, and it has a name on it, is not rated because it's not meant to be used in cold weather. This is a summer bag, or maybe like a wrap around yourself if you're sitting in front of a fire or at a campfire or something. You would not use this in a cold day to keep you warm and expect this to keep you warm on a camping trip. Whereas this sleeping bag is expected to convey a certain level of safety in cold weather. 
The warmest rating of all the ratings is called a comfort rating or sometimes a T comfort or temperature comfort rating. And this is the rating that you can expect a person that sleeps generally cold. So in other words, they like it to be, they like to keep warmer at night because their generally body runs cold. In this case, this is usually targeted toward bags that are specifically made for women. Women tend to sleep colder historically, so they like a warmer bag or warmer temperatures. So because the bag has a limitation on how low it can go, they're gonna use a higher temperature to recommend that you camp at for this bag to keep you comfortable. So the comfort rating is generally the highest temperature rating. The next rating, which is lower, and that's a good way to remember it, is called the lower limit or T limit, temperature limit rating. And this is the temperature that is generally used for bags that are geared toward either unisex bags or for men. So realize that if you're looking at a bag that says unisex and you're a female and you generally sleep cold, that temperature rating is not going to be what's probably appropriate for you. You're going to have to go look for the comfort rating of that bag because the T limit is lower. So this is the temperature rating that someone that generally sleeps warm and which is, includes usually men, most men, is going to be comfortable at. Now once again, everybody is a little different. There's no 100%. So there are women that sleep warm and there are men that sleep cold. You have to know your body. Think about how you normally feel in everyday life, how you keep your thermostat at home in your house, how many blankets you use. Are you usually cold when everyone else is comfortable or warm and people say something about it? Are you constantly turning down the air conditioner because you're hot when everyone else is telling you that it's comfortable? Then you should know that you need to adjust your temperature rating when you're looking at a bag and what makes you comfortable. We're talking about several degrees here, but sometimes it could be as high as 15 to 20 degrees variation. That's a lot. So it's not just, I'll put a pair of uh, you know, warmer pants on or you know, thermals and I'll keep comfortable. It might be enough that you wanna choose a different bag. What environment are you intending to use the sleeping bag? I own multiple bags. Some of them are more for colder weather. Some of them are better for warmer or in between weather. Additionally, don't be fooled by the name of the bag. As I already mentioned, this number is not reliable. Frequently, manufacturers will round up or round down the ratings to get that number. It is always in a multiple of five. If you take a look at sleeping bags, you never see a 27 degree bag. Even if it tests for 27 degrees, you'll see bags that are rated for zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, or 40. They generally do not pick an odd number that's in between that, and that's just for simplicity's sake. Remember, that's the number that draws your attention that's advertising for you. You want to look at the ratings. Does one degree make that big of a difference? No, but 15 or 12 degrees can make a big difference. Additionally, some bags will come with a third rating. And I like to say this is an extreme rating or a survival or an emergency mode only. This is a rating that you will generally not die at, but you definitely won't be comfortable and you may even have an issue with hypothermia. So it is only to be used in an emergency and not to be counted upon. There are numerous examples online of companies using a rating, taking it, and then changing it in their product line. So the product line number will not always match the rating, as I've said. One of the examples I was able to locate is on REI's website using the Nemo Disco 15 sleeping bag. That bag was ISO tested to a comfort rating of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means for most females or someone that generally sleeps cold, that bag can be expected to keep them okay until about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. But remember, the bag has 15 in its title. So where did they get that number? The lower limit, which was ISO tested, is 14 degrees. Actually lower than the 15 degree rating that's in the title. But that's where they get the 15. So the 15 degrees, or in this case, the 14 degree tested number, is actually the rating that you would expect if you were a male, where you tend to sleep warm to keep you comfortable. We're talking about 10 degrees here. That is a big variation. The current Trek 1, which uses 30 degrees Fahrenheit in its advertisement, in its product name, lists a comfort rating and an expected use anywhere between 30 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That bag also lists the EN rating for women as 41 degrees. So the comfort level is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking at the specs, you can now extrapolate and understand that these numbers 41 degrees is the comfort rating and 30 degrees is the lower limit. And that's why even though this bag is recommended to be used from 30 degrees to 70 degrees, 
somewhere between 30 and 41 degrees, you're kind of pushing the ability of this bag. So unless you, you do some other steps or are a very warm sleeper, you're most likely gonna be cold. The sleeping bag that I have in front of me is a TK or Trek bag. It's an older bag and its ratings are a little bit different than the current model. It is similar in its ratings, but different. It lists a comfort level of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. It lists a lower limit of 30 degrees, and it also has a published extreme rating. That's the rating I talked about you should only use in an emergency or for survival mode of five degrees Fahrenheit. And what I like about the Sea to Summit bag is these ratings are printed right on the bag in the, in the case for storage. So there's no guessing, you don't have to remember them. They're right there and accessible for you to see. Additionally, remember that the sleeping bag style affects both its temperature and its other factor that we should generally care about, which is its weight or the bulk it takes up. Generally, rectangular type bags like this one usually do not go down to very cold weather unless they have to add a lot more weight. So these bags will, are generally better for warmer weather and are usually heavier. You have a larger surface area, so they're good if you like to move around, but because of that larger surface area, you have more air you need to warm up, and there's more air and exchanging the heat because of the greater surface area. So it takes longer to warm this bag up, more energy to keep it warm, and it loses heat faster than a mummy type bag. Mummy type bag is smaller, tapered, so there's less surface area to warm up and to keep warm, less surface area for the exchange of heat and it warms up faster because there's less volume inside of air and they generally tend to weigh less for the same rating so if I'm going car camping and I don't care about weight or I'm just going on a very light hike I might take a rectangular bag but if I'm going backpacking over several miles in several days generally you're gonna see mummies type bags now this goes down to personal preference as well because some people like the room they like to spread out their legs or move them a lot they, they know they like that extra room or they're larger, they need more room, they're gonna go with a rectangle type bag or a much larger mummy bag. And they do have some hybrid bags now that have a little bit of both. So those bags will be in between both of these things. So you need to decide what you're gonna do. And another important factor is your sleeping pad. Your sleeping bag is an integral part of your sleep system. And depending on the insulation layer that it provides, it is gonna do a very good job or a very poor job of insulating you from the cold ground, which is trying to rob you of heat constantly. They do make pads for colder weather that have more reflective material and tend to keep you warmer. So that's a way to increase the usefulness of your bag. Additionally, you can buy a liner that goes in your sleeping bag that extends the range of usefulness that you can use it with. And I have used these with this bag down to 20 degrees, even though its lower limit is 32. I have gone down to the mid 20s with this bag with the liner, and I've been quite warm to the point that I'm actually opening up the bag a little bit to let heat out because the liners and the bag are so effective. Like anything else, the more research you do, the more you dig down into the specs and think about really what you need, how you're planning on using the bag, you're gonna be more satisfied. I wouldn't take this bag on a very, very cold winter hiking trip. I have a colder bag, a bag that is made for colder weather, I should say. It runs warmer. This bag is pretty good for three season use. And I've used it down to 20 something degrees, like I said, but with proper planning, a good liner and a good sleeping pad, which extends my range. In addition to clothing, which I'm wearing, which keeps me warmer also. So you can layer your clothing to keep you warm. You can open a bag and unzip it to let some heat out, but if it's hot and it's hot outside, you can't cool down anymore. Additionally, if a bag doesn't have the ability to keep you warm, no matter how much you cuddle around in it, wrap it around you, and how much clothes you put on, it may not keep you warm. So you need to be smart about what you're doing so you can have a good night's sleep. And the whole reason why I'm discussing this is because on my recent episode and my last camping trip, the temperatures went down to 26 published, which I was a little higher up, so they were probably in the low 20s. And I was freezing in my bag, I was very cold. Could not get my feet warm. My torso and everything was warm, but my feet weren't. And I just had mentioned to someone that I was really cold, even though I had my new bag. And when they heard the temperature rating, they said, well, if it's good for 20 degrees, you were above 20 degrees, you should have been warm. 
That night, I put more clothes on to keep warm. I had my jacket on, I had a hat. So my torso was generally warm. It was really just my legs and especially my feet, even with a pair of socks on that I couldn't keep warm. And I could have put a second pair of socks in. I could have even put maybe a jacket down at the bottom of my uh, toe box of my sleeping bag to keep me warm, but I didn't. So those are all things I could have done to mitigate the cold weather. So since they asked me the question of if you have a 20 degree bag and it wasn't below 20 degrees, why were you so cold? I had the conversation with them that we basically just had on this episode to explain how the ratings work and why 20 degrees in a bag title doesn't mean 20 degrees in real life. And that was the, I guess, the push for this episode because someone asked me a question. And despite knowing these things, I, like you, generally look at, oh, a 20 degree bag, it's gonna be good to 20 degrees. But we have to use our education and step out of that to make sure we get the bag that works for us. So we can take the ratings, but just not use them at face value. With a little proper planning and research, you can get a bag that will keep you comfortable and have a good night's sleep, as long as you're using it in the range of temperatures that it was designed to work for. Let me know your thoughts on sleeping bags and testing, your experience, any issues you've had. If uh, there's anything else that you can add to this conversation, please leave a comment below. If you like what I'm doing and you like the videos and you feel so inclined, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and got anything out of it. Once again, thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Till we meet again. tests. Mm. Almost lost my papers there.